is Gen 3 on par with Sora? I did a lot of testing and want to show you today what it is really good at, but also where the weaknesses are. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? I want to show you the new model from Runway. It's an alpha version right now, and you can only use it as a paid customer. But I did a lot of testing for you, so I'm going to show you my examples, but of course, also how the website works. Let's get started. So first, let's have a quick look at the website. Like I said, this is an alpha version. So right now, the only thing you can do here is to enter the prompt down here you can decide the length between five and ten seconds then you have here some settings but they are only about the fixed or random seat if you want to remove the watermark and there's only one resolution which is 7020p so it's not the highest resolution you can create with the runway models and then you can also save some custom presets if you want to but as you've seen there's not so many settings. Now, if you look at the prior model, the Gen 2 model, there's a lot on offer here. So you can drop an image in here as a starting point. You have settings here for the resolution, for the seat, for the interpolation, the watermark, the prompt weight, and so on. So there's a lot of different settings you can set. You have the camera control, horizontal pan, zoom, roll, tilt, vertical, lots of stuff. The motion brush, which can be very useful, where you can brush out what part of the image should move in which way. You also have selection from different styles. You have selection from different ratios. And of course, then you can also save all of that in custom presets. So the full version that is available right now only for the Gen 2 model has a lot of settings and ability. And I think after the testing for Gen 3, is finished they will also enable all of these functions for gen 3 and as you can see here i have done a lot of testing for you i will show you a lot of these examples today most of the time it worked almost right away sometimes i had to test around with the prompt like here with the flyover over the lava and other things and of course i also tried out the different prompts, the different abilities. By the way, one thing that's pretty cool here is you can do lip sync. I'm going to play you a video of that also. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? Today, we are going to check out Runway Gen 3. It's their new video AI model, and it can do some pretty crazy things. Let's get started. This here is the very first video I have created. It's a first person view of a motorcycle driving through a neon city at night, as you can see. It looks pretty amazing. It has very nice details. It looks very consistent. Of course, there are certain mistakes or certain errors in here. For example, if you look at the mirrors, they don't really reflect what you should see in there. But overall, I feel like it looks pretty cool. Another thing this model does exceptionally well is these time-lapse videos. So if you have a landscape, if you have something that is abstract and kind of slow moving, it works really well. Here we have another version where we have a time lapse in the background with the stars, but in the foreground, the fire is in real time. That is a pretty cool effect. You can actually also do that with a real camera, but here I would say it looks pretty amazing. It also looks pretty convincing. Of course, the stars are probably not in the right position. I did, of course, try for you the spaghetti eating animation and here, well, it doesn't work so well. It might work better with some better prompting, but I, um, well, I didn't get a good result from that. Although I have to say he's putting the spaghetti in his mouth, he's biting from it and nothing is sticking out afterwards in a weird way. We can even see the sauce dropping from his chin. So. Overall, it is actually not that bad, even though it's not specifically a good animation of someone eating spaghetti. Next, I'm going to show you something that this model does really well. And these are these drone flights, especially going through a cave or a tunnel. And then you can prompt between different locations. So here we have kind of a Victorian London scenery. And then we go through the tunnel and come out in neon Tokyo, which is pretty amazing 
amazing, very nice effect. What I very much like about this scene is that we actually can see the neon Tokyo buildings through the tunnel, but also above the buildings before the drone flies into it. So that's a very nice consistency, to be honest. Here we have another scene I really enjoy, even though some parts of it look a little bit like a 3D animation, which is going from a beach through a cave to that tropical rainforest with the waterfall and the waterfall rainforest scenery. That looks really amazing. For these kind of landscape shots, the Gen 3 model is really great and sometimes you can't even differentiate it from an actual video. So the quality here is really stunning. And of course, I also had to try a little bit of a Harry Potter effect. So here we have the scene where we fly into the tent and there is a full size room inside. And I feel like that worked really well. Beautiful forest, very nice tent, and then a believable room in the inside with very nice decorations. And as you will see here, it also stays very consistent. There is no flickering. There is not much of any kind of morphing or changing of the objects. Everything stays in place, even though the camera is flying along the scene. So that's, I feel, very impressive. Now let's talk about body movement. Here we have that scene that is kind of similar to that music video created with Sora. And I feel like it has the same dreamlike, strange morphing quality and the strange airy uh, gravity lacking movement of the running, which doesn't look very realistic, but at the same time has this beautiful, playful quality that I really enjoyed about the Sora music video. So I would say in that regard, they are actually pretty similar. And here I have another video of a woman dancing on the street in the sunset. And it kind of looks good for the most part. It has some mistakes in here. The anatomy and the movement is sometimes not completely correct. But for what it is and for the consistency it has, actually, I'm pretty surprised it is good like that. Because overall, Gen 3 can have considerable problems with movement. And here we see one of the more goofy examples of a female gymnast doing her exercises on the bar and she is completely morphing into something else. Of course, I can understand that stuff like this is really difficult for an AI model to learn because there's just so much happening and to figure out the consistency of how things are actually connected is very hard just from visual data. That said, something this model is surprisingly good at is this animation here of a girl playing a violin. I would say this almost looks like an actual video. Only if you look at the hand, you see that the fingers are way too long. The hands are way too big for that woman playing that violin. And here we have a guy playing the drums again. I feel like the movement is surprisingly good, although he's changing from a boy into a man with a beard. So there is a little bit of a inconsistency here over time. But overall, with the camera movement and everything, I'm very impressed also with the light coming from behind. And I have another video here of a singer with long hair. Again, the light coming from behind. It looks pretty good. It has a little bit of morphing issues. The anatomy is sometimes wrong. But overall, I have to say I'm pretty impressed of what this model can do, especially because that model is not so good with body movement. That said, we have here another video of a woman going through Victorian London in a Victorian dress, I would say the overall scene and light is very cinematic. Now there is some problems with her arm that is suddenly bending backwards to the camera. So you probably have to do multiple tries here. But I feel like overall, again, I'm pretty impressed. One thing I really enjoyed with these videos is this, which is kind of more an artistic approach here with this kind of crystalline decoration on her head. And I would say that the consistency of the elements she's wearing, but also of her and the details of her face and character, actually pretty beautiful. And again, the cinematic light here is very nice. 
Then I have the same thing with this guy here with flowers in the hair and the beard. Again, look at how consistent the character stays while turning his head. So surprisingly, this model is very good at close up videos of a face. Very detailed, very nice and consistent. Actually looks like a real video. Of course, I had to try apocalyptic scenes. And one thing I like are these kind of scenes with giant tsunami waves crashing towards a city like movies like that. And I have to say this scene with the camera rotating and the drone flying into the tunnel of the wave is pretty stunning. It looks really like a very cool movie scene where I want to watch more of that movie and again this I feel like is the best potential of this model with these kind of landscapes and drone flies. And here we have another scene that uses a drone movement. Now here the landscape is kind of moving a little bit too much when it's zooming out at the beginning but the guy standing on the cliff with the sunset light and the waves crashing against these cliffs looks actually very nice even though not perfectly correct from a physical standpoint of how the waves are moving in the background but it just looks very beautiful. I also tried these first person scenarios, one of a roller coaster. Now overall, I feel like it's pretty okay, even though the structure of the roller coaster is all over the place with the roller coaster architecture. So this could be a lot cleaner, but the movement and the timing feels pretty nice overall. So if this could be cleaned up a bit, I feel like already it's a pretty good shot. And here we have another video from a water park. Again, the water splashing is a little bit strange and the morphing of the water slide. Also, the legs are kind of morphing throughout the video. But the overall feeling is there. It just makes a lot of mistakes. But at the same time, right now at this moment, what I personally enjoy about this video or these videos in general is their dreamlike quality. And I feel like all of the models out there, even Sora, even Kling has these kind of problems of everything morphing. But at the same time, you feel like you are in a different dimension. So I kind of see this lacking this error as a feature or a benefit at that moment in time. Of course, I also want to show you the videos of the flight over the volcano here. I feel like we have some very beautiful scenes. This model is very good with fire, even though the smoke sometimes goes in the wrong direction. But overall, it's a pretty amazing shot. And the camera movement of the drone again is very smooth. The overall scenery and the colors look very beautiful and cinematic. Here is another shot of similar concept. Again, we have a volcano eruption fly with the drone over it. And again, I feel like from the colors and everything, it looks pretty nice, almost realistic if the smoke wouldn't move in this kind of strange way, sometimes too fast, sometimes too slow. Here we also have a camera shot where the drone is flying around a burning car. I have to say that overall it looks pretty good, almost realistic, very nice. Like I said, this model is pretty good with fire and smoke and all these kind of cinematic lights. One thing that really took me by surprise with this model is how good the text effects work and how consistent it is for the text itself. Now, the text can't be super long. It has to be two or three words, but it creates beautiful effects. And I kind of wish that this would export the After Effects file so you can afterwards write any kind of text. But even that, as it is right now, is pretty amazing. And as you can see, I created different effects with different kind of fonts, with neon light, with kind of magical effects in a forest and so on. So really cool things. And most of the time, this actually worked on the first roll. The only problem I sometimes had is the spelling of the word, especially if the text or the word is too long. So with the standard version, you get per month 625 credits. 
that is not a lot, especially if you want to create 10 second videos. They do have an unlimited plan similar to mid journey where the rendering might take a little bit longer, but you can create as many images as you want. But this is $76 per month. So that's on the higher side of the pricing. Of course, there's also the pro version with 2,250 credits per month. To be fair, this takes a lot of GPU time. So I can understand that the processing is pretty expensive, especially with such a capable model. Okay, so here is my final verdict about my early test of the Gen 3 Alpha version. Overall, it can create beautiful videos, especially if it's landscape, it's drone flying, it's time lapse. These kind of scenes work really beautifully. It's not so good with complex human motion, especially if all the arms and the legs move around in a fast way. So not great at that. One thing I wish was there, but I can understand right now it's the early alpha. I would like to see a way to create variations because sometimes you get a result you really like and then you can't really create something that is similar. I don't think personally I would pay for it because right now it makes too many mistakes and I wouldn't even know what to do with the AI videos after all. But think about the guy who created the Sora music video and became internationally famous with this specific video. That is a huge potential. It's a huge chance you can have right now. And for that, with unlimited video generation, I feel like the pricing is good if you have a plan of what to do with this video AI. That's it for today. Leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more like that. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.